To start off today's video, I want to do a little activity. I want you to pat your head and rub your belly at the same time. Okay, keep going. But now I want you to switch where your hands are. So if it was your right hand patting your head, now I want your right hand rubbing your belly. But keep patting your head and rubbing your belly. Okay, now I want you to leave your hands where they are, but switch what they're doing. So now I want you to rub your head and pat your belly. Okay, you can stop now. Now I know this was kind of a silly way to start a video, but you are able to do this activity because of your nervous system. And that is today's topic. The nervous system has three main functions, sensory input, integration, and motor output. Sensory input is when you feel or sense something with your body's five senses, such as heat from a match, an ant on your hand, or smell your brother's stinky socks. These are all examples of sensory input. Integration is the interpretation of the information and determining a response. So, interpreting that the match is hot and could burn you. The ant crawling on you is unpleasant. The socks smell really bad. Motor output is actually doing a response. So dropping the match, brushing the ant away, quickly leaving your brother's room. Your nervous system does this throughout the day more times than you could probably count. There are two main divisions in the nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, or CNS, includes the brain and spinal cord. This is where integration happens. The peripheral nervous system, or PNS, is everything else. Your nerves communicating between the CNS and the rest of the body. So sending the sensory input and motor output to where they need to go. To break it down further, there are two types of nerves, neurons and glial cells. Neurons are the body's communication passing those messages and will have its own whole video explaining how they do this. Glial cells are smaller and do not transmit messages, but instead protect and nourish the neurons, helping them form and function properly. Now, if you're not too overwhelmed yet, there is an important breakdown of the peripheral nervous system. There are somatic nerves and autonomic nerves. Somatic nerves are mostly what's been discussed so far. These nerves lead to skeletal muscle, bone, and skin, and we consciously control them. So like you see a red light and you control your leg to press the brake. Autonomic nerves regulate the body's internal organs without conscious control. You don't have to think about your heart beating or your stomach digesting to have them function properly. The autonomic nerves are divided into two types, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic nerves turn the system on to get ready for an emergency. This is sometimes called your fight or flight response. It increases energy consumption in the body so that you can run or fight if you need to. So things happen in your body such as your eyes dilate to see more of the situation and your heart beats faster to get oxygen everywhere it needs to go. Other parts of your body that aren't needed in an emergency are turned off or lessened such as your stomach and intestines digesting and your saliva production. You probably noticed in an emergency response, your mouth feels really dry. Your parasympathetic nerves, on the other hand, turn off the emergency response and help your body return to a normal and calm state. It helps the body conserve energy and gain more through things like digesting food. This was a lot of information in a very short time, so feel free to rewatch any parts you need to hear again and watch the other videos about the nervous system to better your understanding. <music>